Here, we'll talk about basis and dimension. So we'll start by defining those two words. So the basis of a vector space is a set of linearly independent vectors that spans the vector space. And the dimension of a vector space is the number of vectors in any given basis. So in order to be a basis, we need two things. We need the vectors to be linearly independent, which means no free variables. We also need them to span the entire vector space. So everything in the vector space should be able to be written as a linear combination of these vectors. So let's start by discussing a basis for Rn. Well, let's consider these three vectors, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So these vectors form the columns of the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And these three are linearly independent, and they do span. So these right here form a basis. And in fact, these are called the standard basis for R3. And we can expand this to Rn. So in general, the standard basis for Rn is the columns of the n by n identity. Like I said, this is the standard basis. If you want to think about this graphically, these represent our axes. If you're dealing with R2, they'll represent the x and y axis. These three right here will represent the x, y, and z. So a basis for a given vector space is not unique. So we'll find another basis for R3, which is these three. We need to show that they're linearly independent and they span. So we'll put them in a matrix and try to row reduce. And when we do, we get the matrix 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, and 0, 0, 1. So we can see that there's no free variables, so that these are linearly independent, and there's no row of zeros, which means they span. So we have now shown that this is a basis for R3. So while Rn is nice to think about, a subspace is also a vector space. So we need to be able to consider the basis and dimension of a subspace. So let's go back to R3. If we want to think of subspaces, we have four possibilities. We can have a possible dimension zero. So this is the zero subspace. It would correspond to just the origin, a single point. A dimension of 1 would correspond to a line through the origin. Dimension 2 would correspond to a plane through the origin. And dimension 3 would represent all of R3. So let's consider this subspace W, which is the span of these vectors V1 and V2. We want to find a basis. Well, the first thing we need to find is linear independence. And we've talked about, if you have two vectors, that they'll be independent provided one is not a multiple of, each of the other. And in this case, they're not. So v1 and v2 are linearly independent, since one is not a multiple of the other. The other question is, do they span w? Well, by definition of w, they also span. So we define the space w to be the span of these vectors. So v1 and v2 do form a basis. So now we'll consider these three vectors. We want w to be the space spanned by these three vectors. And we can see that 2v1 plus 3v2 minus v3 is equal to 0. So we already know that they're not linearly independent. I want to show that the span of v1, v2, and v3 is the same as the span of v1 and v2. So when we do this, we have two things to show. The first, if I start with something in the span of the three vectors, so c1, v1, plus c2, v2, plus c3, v3, I should end with something in the span of v1 and v2. Well, I can rewrite v3 
as 2v1 plus 3v2 because of this equation that's given in the problem. We can regroup things to get c1 plus 2c3 v1 plus c2 plus 3c3 v2. So now this is in the span of v1 and v2. The second thing we need to do is start with something in the span of v1 and v2 and show we can write this in the span of v1, v2, and v3. Well, this is actually probably easier because I can write it as c1, v1 plus c2, v2 plus 0, v3. So now we've shown that these things are the same. So this last example was an example of the spanning set theorem. So the idea of this is if we have a vector space with a subspace given by the span of a set of vectors, and if we know one of the vectors in this set, we'll call it vk, is a linear combination of the remaining vectors, the set formed by removing vk will still span w. So basically what this says is if we have a set that's not linearly independent, we can get rid of those problem vectors and we will not lose the spanning. So for example, let's find a basis and dimension for this subspace. So if I put this in a matrix, the next step would be to row reduce. And we don't have to row reduce all the way. We only have to get it in row echelon form rather than reduced row echelon form. And when we do that, the first two rows will stay the same, and the last row will become all zeros. So therefore you'll see that x3 is a free variable, and that's going to cause problems. So the dimension of this is 2, and the basis will be v1, v2 since V3 is the problem vector.